Well, um, I'm here today to assure everybody that we are prepared for the election. And I'll give you a little briefing on the preparation. And then thereafter, we can go into interaction. You know, before the election, we had, we had to scoop around, do some threat analysis of the whole country to identify flashpoints, to identify individuals or groups that are likely to cause destruction here and there in order to talk to them and then try to put them in the right good manner for proper conduct of election. All the commissioners of police in the states have gone around with INEC officials and identified all the polling booths, all the polling units and voting centers in their commands. They identified them in advance for proper deployment. And in every polling unit, we are going to have three security personnel to be led by the police. The three security personnel may not only going to be police officers, but you are going to have other security agencies in the pooling unit. So you may have police officers, you may have NDLA with him, you may have a customs with him, you may have immigration officer with him, you may have a, a civil defense officer with the police officer, just to secure the INEC officials there, the electoral materials, and the voters. <clears throat> now, in every polling unit, the security personnel you will have are not going to be armed. They are going to be only with their either canister of tear gas in case somebody will attack the pulling unit or pulling boot, or you see them with their buttons, though we don't carry buttons nowadays. <laughs> However, there will be detachment of police officers armed far away from, from the pulling unit that will be patrolling to make sure that that don't come to disrupt the process of voting. It is for that reason we are going to deploy about 24,000 mobile police officers, 4,000 counter-terrorism unit personnel, about 8,000 special protection unit personnel. That is in addition to the multitude that we deployed to the pooling units and the, um, the rack, that is the registration area centers. In the state, the way we are being engaged here at the national level, the commissioners, uh, commissioners of police in the state are also engaging the stakeholders at the local level, bringing together all the political party officials, security personnel, local observers, all in a forum like this,
to make sure that we understand ourselves on what to do on the election day. The electoral materials will be secured by this detachment of police officers from the mobile uh, squadrons, from the special protection unit, and from the counter-terrorism unit. All the electoral materials will be escorted by this personnel, and this personnel will be armed in escorting the materials. During the distribution of the electoral materials from the central bank to the, um, from the IBEC, I mean central bank to island state headquarters and other units within the states or local governments will be done by armed policemen. Personnel who escorted these materials to either the Iraq or the local governments or the pooling units are expected to stay and protect the materials, to protect the island staff, to protect the national youth uh, corpus members that will be doing ad hoc duties. They are also expected to accompany INEC officials to distribute all the materials to the various wards and pooling units on the election day. When they do that, after the deployment, they are also expected to carry the reverse movement after the voting. That is, they will escort such materials from the pooling units to the ward collection centers, to the local government collection centers, and escort the materials and the results to the stake INEC headquarters. Now to specifically identify to you those areas that we need maximum security protection are the state INEC headquarters, the, the INEC local government office, the ward collection centers, the command headquarters, the corpus lodge, the central bank offices, the observers, well, local, we are going to be protected. <laughs> so, on the election day, at 5 a.m., all our personnel that are scheduled for election duties must be at their pooling units by 5 a.m. So that before you come for voting, we're already there waiting for you. <laughs> and they must wear the election identification tag with eligible name tag on their uniforms for easy identification. Personnel deployed to pooling units, as I told you, will not carry firearms, but they will carry their handcuff with them in case the presiding officer says, please help me remove this man. Men at the pooling unit must look out for board buyers, whether board buyers or board sellers. We are opening our eyes to see you. <laughs> I will be opening our eyes to see political touts that will prevent, we will do that so as to prevent uh, electoral offenses and we shall make arrests with the instruction of the presiding officer. 
Security personnel must ensure that they keep watch over electoral materials during the voting. They keep watch on INEC officials. They keep watch on the ad, uh, ad hoc staff and ensure proper conduct of all concerned at the polling units. When you cast your vote and you want to protect your vote, you stay around if you wish. But the INEC has indicated the distance you will stay so that you don't cause nuisance at the polling booth. We were told that you had to stay about 300 meters away from the polling booth to see and wait for the counting to take place. We promise to be professional. All the security agents during the election, we promise to be professional. We promise to be neutral. We want to have free, fair, and credible election. At the polling unit, no security personnel is allowed to hinder accredited foreign observers or local observers from observing the election process. However, we told them not to grant you interview. There are processes for interviewing our personnel. And any security personnel seen around, vote, around the voting center in uniform without identification tag shall be arrested. Any VIP, very important personnel, moving from one point to another in the name of monitoring or supervising the election, either with or without security personnel in uniform or in multi shall be prevented and the security personnel shall be arrested. Any voter or party official or member dressed in party logo or shouting party slogan or moving with his political party vehicle with party inscription shall be arrested and be handed over for investigation. All security personnel posted on this duty, election duty, should strictly enforce the non-movement restriction from 6 in the morning to 6 in the evening on voting days or until voting is concluded. The observers, both local and international, we shall identify you with, the, with your tax. If you have your tax, you'll be free to move about and observe. If you don't have a tag, please don't come out to say you're observing. We will observe you and take care of you. <laughs> and I know the, the tax given, that you'll be given to will be unique that nobody can fake it. But in an event where we are suspecting you, we will link up with INEC to clarify. If we see an observer that we are suspecting is not uh, truly accredited will not take action without clearance from the INEC. So thank you very much. <laughs>